In today's video in our Unreal Engine 4 101 course, we will be introducing the user interface. Whether you're a Unity refugee or just new to Unreal Engine 4, a few things are going to seem a little confusing at first. Today's video will fix that. We're going to go over the basics of navigating the user interface. In the following video series to come, we will continue to cover how to use Unreal Engine 4 working up towards a small playable game. Let me introduce myself, Insomnia from Unreal Tech, a division of Blender Tech, and welcome to another video. If you enjoyed or learned something, consider liking it and subscribing for more Unreal, Blender, coding, and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So let's jump right in. With a project open, whether it be a template, blank project, or an example project, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you have the same window open as me here. That is the main editor window. If you don't have this open, there's a few ways to do that. You can go file, a uh, new project, right from the menu there or under the epics game launcher you can just hit launch unreal engine 4. so with our project in front of us let's go over a few things let's go over the window layout first it should look like this at stock if it doesn't you can always go window reset layout you can also save your layout once you're happy with it and you can also turn on and off different windows you see here if i turn on something like statistics a window opens I can grab this tab and I can dock it anywhere you notice all these little places for me to dock it means I can customize my layout however I want it and I can close them at any time as well this allows you to customize your layout in any way to whatever suits you anyways though the stock layout so we have over here the modes window this has a place mode so that allows you to place things like say a cube where the player starts trigger areas visual effects lights your your typical things there's many many things you can place then you have paint this allows you to do some uh, some texture painting and vertice painting we won't get into that you have your landscape mode which allows you to basically build landscapes with a brush you have foliage which allows you to do the same thing basically uh, paint stuff like trees and, and bushes and then you have uh, geometry editing sometimes called BSP so what that allows you to do is create prototype geometry by just moving vertices and lines and faces around within the editor without having to have a 3d modeling program open for prototyping we're just going to focus on the simple place modes one the stock one that you see this is where you will find basic things to put into your level for example let's say we wanted our player to start somewhere we would take player start click drag and drop it anywhere in our level just like that our player is now going to start right there we can hit f to focus you'll see it focuses right in on it right there is where our player is going to start so that's just an example you can also add something like a light let's say we had a point light we could place it right by our player as you can see our point light is now going to be influencing the area of this little sphere and if i hit f to focus again you'll see it right here this these little um sprites are called widgets they just indicate that you have a light there when there's no mesh to be shown so we have a light and a player start in our scene i want to bring you to the window we're using right now this is called the main viewport this is where you will do playing to test your game in the editor this is called pi or play in editor this is where you'll drag and drop stuff. This is, this is where you'll be doing a lot of work. Well, this is where you'll be doing all of your work for the most part in designing your levels and your game. We also have over here a world outliner. This can be thought of as the, the scene hierarchy in, in Unity. In here, we have a list of every single thing added to our level. For example, player start two. I have selected, you can see it's an orange. That is what we just added and it's now on our scene outliner. You'll see if I double click on the name or press F2, I can rename it. I can call it player start new or whatever you want. You're also able to make folders. If I have this selected and press the new folder button up here, 
it creates a new folder that holds that I can call this the new player starting position you can also just select your map from the very top this will always be the top that tells you the name of the map you're in and you can hit the new folder and it will create just a new general folder and you, you can call this something say like level lights for example Unreal Engine 4 allows you to organize things very easy in the world outliner when you have something selected let's go down to the details panel this is just like the properties panel in unity this gives you every part every components data here we have a transform component with its details object rendering input and actor something that might look a little more familiar to unity users is if I was to add something like we'll say just a simple cube mesh you'll see it has transform data you see we have a component list here you see we can add components we can also make our own components you see we have a static mesh renderer we can choose a different one we have a material we can choose a different one we have physics collision lighting rendering physics volume and tags tags work the exact same way as in unity as you can see when you hover over something it gives you a tool tip this is is one of the best way to find out what everything means in Unreal is just hover over it. It basically tells you what everything is and does in in the editor and in some places like say over here where it says hold control alt for more that gives you more information on it as well as a link to documentation anyways on to the next most important menu of course your content browser this is exactly the same this is exactly the same as the project browser in Unity. This holds all of your assets that you've imported into your into your game that you're able to use within your game in many different ways. You'll see under the third person blueprint template that I have, I have a folder called animations, blueprints, characters maps and meshes for example we were just under meshes and we had a few different meshes we could use like stairs for example as you can see I can just drag and drop right into the level and it will snap directly onto the surface let's go over one thing first before we talk about that in Unreal Engine if you look very carefully you'll notice that Z in blue or Z for us Canadians is up this is the industry standard for a lot of modeling programs, but I know Unity uses YUP. So in Unreal Engine 4, and in most programs for that case, Z is up, X is forward, and Y is right. So you have your, so Y positive and minus is left and right, positive X is forward, negative X is back, positive Z is up or negative Z is down. So something to be aware of. We have a bunch of options up here at the top. You'll see again if I drag and drop it in here, we have the same keys as before, W to translate, E to rotate, R to scale. And we also have the buttons up here if we want it. But again, W, E, and R is exactly the same as in Unity and that's pretty consistent within modeling programs as well. Lastly, we have the ability to cycle between world and local space the hot key for that is control tilled tilled being the key the console key right beside the number one on your keyboard so that if i had rotated this object in local space if i was to move it it would move along its rotation but if i change that to world space then it still moves back in world space that's pretty basic though that we'll get into more later Lastly, we have a bunch of snapping options, which are very, very useful. We have surface snapping. You see if I enable this, that means everything will snap to its surface. So the stair will snap to this surface. If I put a cube, it will snap right onto its, right onto its surface. That one's a good example. Notice how it snaps right onto its surface right where you're right onto the surface you're trying to drag onto see how that snapped onto the edge of it there this all depends on the pivot point center point whatever you're used to calling it we'll turn it off now look at the difference when i try to add the same thing it doesn't snap to the surface next we have next we have um 
grid snapping. You can disable or enable it just by clicking that button right there. Now, how this works is the drop down beside it allows you to select different sizes to snap to. Now this is measured in centimeters and un one unreal unit is one centimeter. One unity unit is one meter or 100 centimeters. Just something to keep in mind, but that keeps it nice and easy. One centimeter and allows you to have powers of 10 as well. So you can see this is one centimeter, five centimeters, all the way up to uh, 10 meters and 100 meters. You're, you can also go into the preferences and add your own sizes i've added some like 250 25 2500 you can add as many as you want so let's change it to 500 that's five meters you'll see now if i click with my leftmost button to select this little these stairs and i can drag the the widget to move it you'll see it will snap in exactly 500 increments notice the trans form location data on the right goes exactly 500 units down in any direction of course and again we can change that to anything we can go down to one if we want for precision we can go up high and again you can always create your own custom ones and that'll go way off 100 meters but you can also just disable that to get ultimate super super precision down to down to fractions of a mic of a millimeter down to down to micrometers anyways next we have rotation up here rotation same thing you enable or disable rotation snapping with this button right here and again it's incremented in degrees which you can also create custom ones we have divisions of 360 and just regular ones um, again like I said you can create your own but let's start with five degrees so I'm going to go into rotate mode again the hotkey is E and as you see we can just rotate it we get this nice little compass or protractor whatever you want to call it and just like that you see we can rotate it 90 degrees or any other increment but if we want a custom mount we just disable that and we can go down in any amount we want just like that very cool we won't get into scale grid snapping that's a bit more complex lastly you have camera speed this is for navigating the viewport the last thing i'm going to get to in this lesson to move around in the viewport hold down your right mouse button and this allows you to look around with the camera while you're doing this you can use w a s and d to fly around just like no clip in a first person shooter so uh d to the right a to the left W forward, S is back, and also Q is down and E is up. So that allows you to navigate the viewport very easily. You can also hold leftmost button down to just pan left and right or move forward, zoom in and out. So it's just kind of a basic view from whatever view you're looking at. But you can also use the arrow keys to go like that and up and down in a nice panning motion. Lastly, you have middle mouse button, which pans in the other axis like so. And again, we can use the arrow keys to move in the same way. There are a few other ways to navigate, but the easiest and most common is to hold down the rightmost button and fly around with W, A, S, D, Q, and E. You can change the camera speed by clicking this button up here and toggling it from 1 to 8, 1 being very slow and 8 being extremely fast. You can also scroll your mouse wheel while you're moving to change that you can see i'm at eight but since i'm scrolling down it's moving slower if i stop scrolling then it gets much faster if i scroll up just like that so you can kind of change it on the fly and you can get extreme or low values for more precision lastly we have maximize or restore this viewport so that gives us full screen in this case we got a four panel view 
depending on your settings but f11 will bring you into full screen in and out just like your browser or everything else that uses f11 for full screen uh, we'll just go over the last few buttons we have perspective top if we want to go into wireframe side front for super precision of course perspective and then we have different views lit unlit wireframe there's there's many in here which we won't get into today and lastly show this just allows you to turn certain things off for example sprites hide all you'll notice that if i go to player start it doesn't have a sprite anymore if i turn them back on sprites show all now we see where they are again lastly this little arrow right here Pressing real time, you can see it allows real time rendering. So if you had moving clouds or particle systems, you have show stats, which needs to be enabled. You'll see that you'll see on the bottom. It needs to be enabled in your preferences, but that shows you how much memory and CPU you're using. And lastly, FPS shows you the frames per second you're getting at this very moment that can only be used when real time is checked off if i uncheck real time they're all unchecked we have the field of view which changes our preview camera's field of view the stock is 90 and the far view plane to see how far you can view which in this case has no effect the last we won't really get into again you see the layouts you can have uh different layouts for your viewport and so that's what this button does and so that lets you select it there and there's advanced settings in the settings that we'll get into in a later video that is the basics of navigating the viewport and a few basics of unreal engine 4 i hope that this helped you out in getting a basic intro to learning the editor and i hope you have some fun with it while you wait for my next video where we start building some scripts and placing things in level and going through a few more a few more things about unreal engine that are unique so anyways if you want to just go file and save all control s like anything else to save your project and that's it your project's saved for next time so anyways we will see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching from the team here at Unreal Tech, a division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. See you next time. And remember, create your way.